In this movie, we're going to talk about how to set up and route to run auto toolpath files. And as we said in our previous movie, our parametric design software is going to be used to generate a bunch of part a bunch of DXF files where a separate part is in each DXF file and a cut list which tells us a little bit of information about each of the parts. So, uh, let's come here and take a look at one of these parts. And um, we're just going to open up a default plate size and we'll import a DXF file and this is one of the DXF files from the from the job we ran in the overview. Uh, as you can see this one DXF file was a whole complete part uh, and there are different layers here. We have a layer that determines the cutout and then we have some drill layers for drill hinges, drill drawers, drill pilot drill shelves. These may or may not be going to the same depth except in the case of drill pilot it's always going to be going through so definitely not this one. And then we have route and route back. Uh, and these are just internal cuts that are going to help the pieces fit together. So uh, we have a different layer for each type of operation or toolpath we need to apply. And uh, we can look at one more thing here. If I come to the top view and, and look at this from the side I can see that the geometry is not at a zero position. Uh, we are uh, having a, a uh, ability to read the cut depth for any given toolpath off of the position in the z-axis of the geometry. So all of these will be cut to a depth of 0 0.3760 regardless of what we set the uh, depth to in the save strategy. Uh, this panel cut out is at minus 0.75 so that's how deep we're going to cut that one. And the drill hinges are 0.3937. Let's look at the drill pilots here. They go all the way through. So we're able to read the cut depth for each toolpath off the position in the z-axis. So what we need to do is, is come up with a few toolpaths here in our save strategies and uh, if we want to come here and take a quick look we can see that uh, boundary is the first um, layer name for panel and this is going to get a, a routing offset and we're going to uh, need to save one of those, a routing offset. Drill hinges, drill drawers, drill pilot, and drill shelves are all going to be done with a 5 millimeter drill. So I need to save a strategy that uses a 5 millimeter drill. And route back and route are both going to use an island fill to, to cut out the inside of these areas. Some people might use a female offset as well, but an island fill can cover this area no matter how wide it gets, whereas a female offset will only travel around the inside perimeter. So I prefer to use an island fill here. So we need to create three strategies. All right, we're going to come here and, and delete this. All right, and uh, actually we can we can leave this on screen and just use this to to help us here. Now these island fills, what we're going to do is select these and go to the island fill strategy. We'll choose a tool of a quarter inch end mill here. And we'll specify a depth of 0.25. But as I just explained, we're not going to read this, this depth. We're going to use the geometry to determine how, how deep this should cut. So we'll put our feed rate in here of point of maybe 200. Oh, if we're going to use a, uh, a 3 h and 10 mil, actually. Quarter inch is kind of uh, small for some thicker material. So we'll use a 3 h inch compression. And that way we can go a little bit faster. And uh, maybe we'll do 600 here. All right, so we've got our feed rate in here. And uh, I just like to use a simple term here. I know uh, rabbits and dado are different things, but uh, I'll just call this a dado. And uh, all these parameters are saved. Oh, that's why I'm using that tool. Excuse me here. We're going to change this back to a quarter inch end mill. And sometimes a down cut is used to give smooth edges. Um, we'll do a feed rate here of 250. All right, that looks a little bit better. Now we're going to hit save as. Uh, again, we're going to say dado. And yes, that's going to be our our tool path. And if we come in here, we can see it's just traveling around the inside of the part. But uh, as I said, the nice thing about a dado is even if your part gets wider, you can still get full coverage or about the island fill for cutting these, these types of shapes. Okay, so uh, there's one of our three tool paths. Um, the next is this border cut and here we're going to use the routing offset. So I'm going to come here and 
choose a 3 h and 10 mil H compression will just give a sample depth of 0.76 and this one will bump up the feed rate a little bit and I'm also going to put a 3d entry exit here I mean you can uh, you can really put any kind of of uh, parameters you want to this including which type of direction you want to go uh, here I'm going to use a line entry two inches long zero degree angle and that just means it's going to follow in right along the toolpath and not come in from a from a slight distance alright we're gonna save this one as cut out three eighths we'll save this now I'll come back here one more time and this time I'm gonna add a little onion skin here and this way we're going to be able to save another cut out three eighths and then I just put with onion skin alright now uh, the last type of toolpath we need to save here is a drill centers with the five millimeter drill point tool we'll just put a depth of 0.25 or whatever you want there and I usually go a little bit slower with these tools and we're gonna save this one as five millimeter drill okay now we have all the types of toolpaths we want and if you're using open contours for doing rabbits then then you can come here and create an object that's an open contour and then create an open contour offset to the right left or middle and use that as well and any type of toolpath that you need to use is what you create a save strategy for alright so now we're ready to begin the process of setting everything up we're gonna use KCDW as a as a uh, pretty simple format to go with but we do have a number of products here that we're compatible with, compatible with cabinet solutions KCDW pattern systems which is 2020 router CAD and uh, a few others as well so uh, we're gonna start with KCDW and we're gonna import a file okay now this is a particular job seven parts and this is the job of the part we were looking at just a minute ago and the first time you have to set this up but then it's always saved so you don't have to con constantly redo it we're gonna say use KCDW and this shows us all the layer names of the of the part that, or the jobs that we uh, the, the files that we brought up here so this is all our layer names and we're gonna come here and we're gonna assign to the panel layer a cutout and for a small part a cutout with an onion skin the drill hinge it's gonna get a drill centers Drill drawer is going to get drill centers. Drill pilot will get drill centers. And drill shelf. So no matter what the variation of the depths are, we're using one strategy here. Uh, they can read the depths off the contours. Route back will get a dado. Uh, the island fill. Route will get the island fill. And the route tab will get an island fill. So those are all our layer names. Now here, the only place I'm going to use design depth is with this cutout. When I save my strategy, I saved it at 0.76, but my material design depth was 0.75. Now, in routes, can remember the difference between the save strategy and this design depth and apply it to all the, the layers uh, that get the routing offset that are in the lane panel. So that's a way we can add a little extra depth to a toolpath. The next step here is use depth, which means we are going to read the depth off the DXF files. Toolpath means, or TP means toolpath. NT means nest together. If all of my parts were in one DXF file, and each part that I wanted to stay together was grouped, I can nest these separately and, and process just a single DXF file. But since each part is in a separate DXF file here, we're going to choose nest together. 
And finally, I have output, which means it's outputting the file to and route or that particular layer. The next thing we're going to set up in our, our definition here for Auto Toolpath, now that we've identified all of our layers and assigned a strategy, is to go to the Ordering and Nesting tab. Here I have strategy at the top of my priority order. So I'm going to go to the strategy order and make sure that the output does a drill first, then the island fill, then the offset mail. Now we're going to come here and see the other priority. The next priority is tool. And I, I also have this set up. At, I might move my mail offset tool down a little bit lower. Then the next thing we're going to take a look at is the nesting options. And, and because I have all of my parts oriented in a long x-axis, I'm just going to rotate 180. And I'm not going to have any gap or margin there. There's a tiny gap that's built into the nester because there's a small tolerance. So I'm, I'm just going to use that and let these get as close together as possible. I can use a negative plate margin here if I want to, to move backwards in the material. Uh, I mean to allow my toolpath to go a little bit off the material, but still keeping the part in the material. So there is a, an option for a negative plate margin if you have a real short, tight uh, part to fit on the, on the screen. Uh, next, we're going to choose our default plate size and the, the top of plate or bottom of plate for, for the toolpath. The final thing we're going to do here is decide what's going to be output uh, when we process these KCDW files. So the things we have to decide here are, are we going to create output files, which in this case we are, uh, as a default setting. If we want to create a printout of the parts, yes we do. Uh, if you have the label option, there's label output. And process as single parts is something you would do if you were going to set each part after it's cut out on a uh, fixture and then process each part individually, something commonly done with point-to-point -point machines. Uh, so we're not going to do that here. Um, now we'll, we'll determine the output file name. So we're going to go to, put, just put it in the auto toolpath folder. And we'll call this one, two, three. Now what we're going to do is come here and save this as our KCDW new. And I always just name this something that relates to the type of program I'm going to be running with. So we're going to save this as KCDW new. Now anytime I bring in a file, I'll import my list file. Then I'll load KCDW new and I'll be able to maybe just change the name and process it. So since we're going to process some parts here, let's use a P Adobe PDF. All right, and uh, we're going to hit this. We're going to hit process KCDW. Now there's just one output file here. So some of the things we need to decide here on this setup page are, are we going to create output files as a standard thing? Do we want to create printout of parts? Uh, if we have the label option, are we creating labels for all the, the parts that are processed? And uh, we also, you know, we probably change the output file name based upon every job. And I'm going to print this up to Adobe PDF here. All right, so uh, once you have all your layers defined, you have all the ordering and nesting taken care of along with the default plate size. And here I'd probably want to do small parts first. Uh, maintain part grouping will, by unchecking this, it will allow us to separate the parts and maybe sometimes make for a little bit faster output. Uh, and then uh, we made sure we saved all this information. Now I'm going to save this as, and now I'm going to call this KCDW new. Okay, so now every time I, I want to run a job, I would first load the list file, then load KCDW new, and then hit process. All right, so let's go ahead and process these. Okay, it looks like there's two files here. All right, we're going to call this layer one.
layer two. All right, so here's layer two, and uh, we can see that. Okay, so we got layer two up here a little bit better to see, and here uh, is the kind of layer printout you get. So we can see here's our our parts, and it lists what each of these part numbers are, and we also have one for the back, which is what's on the other layer. So this uh, movie shows the process of how to create strategies and how to identify which strategies you, you need to have, then create them, and then to go here to the Auto Toolpath button and import the file, come here and choose Use KCDW and assign each of these. Uh, the last step here would be to go to the Preferences, which uh, F10 is an easy way to get there, go to the Initialization tab and see that you know we have a, a threshold set up here for a hundred square inches so anything less than a hundred square inches is going to be considered a a small part so here in this case uh, this this part would be close alright and uh, the last thing we can do here is to come here to our solutions menu and start up backplot and backplot is a, is a little g-code previewer that we include as part of en route uh, and it can be found in the Enroute 4.1, uh, the Enroute 4.1 folder. Okay, we've got backplot here now, so we're going to open this file. And we're going to go to Auto Toolpath, and these are the two output files we created. So we can see this is what the output looks like. So this is, uh, as I said, an overview of the process here. And we'll do a couple other movies to demonstrate a few other capabilities of Enroute Auto Toolpath.